and welcome back to Balanced Psychologies. So today I have Sarah Squires with me, the nurturing coach, and we're going to be talking about um, narcissistic families and parental alienation. Sarah Squires is um, very renowned in um, the world of working with parental alienation, and I've got her here on my channel. Um, if you'd like to pop on to her channel, it's um, The Nurturing Coach, and I'll pop the links below in the description box. So if you have any questions um, about wanting to know anything about, hi Sophia, wanting to know anything about um, narcissistic families, communication, parental alienation, Sarah is the person. Okay, so if you'd like to, hi Eddie, thanks for joining us again um, this week. Hello, good to see you too. Okay, so if you have any questions, um, please do write in to us. Yes, no narcs allowed. Who is one, by the way, <laughs> Eddie? Who is it? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so if you'd like to um, send in any of your questions, please do so. So Sarah, do you want to tell us a bit more about the um, wonderful research project that you are actually um, yeah. doing now? Um, well... For those of you who are in relationships with narcissists and have children, parental alienation happens with narcissists. It's part and parcel. They will use um, derogatory terms to describe you, basically to set themselves up as being the better parent. Oh my God, yeah, that's so true. And isn't that the same like when you're in a relationship with one, they're always putting you down, always gaslighting you. Oh, Absolutely, and they, they treat everyone the same. It, they will treat you the same oh as they do God. their children. So they will follow those behaviours, and parental alienation is basically a progression of those behaviours. So they start off with the belittling, and it's about separating your relationship. They're jealous of that relationship, so they want to create a divide between you. Um, yeah. And ultimately when the relationship breaks up they may use other tactics such as and this is where the research project comes in is they may use something called false memories whereby they will implant within their own children the idea that they have been abused yes that is, yes i yes and i've read quite a bit about that and um i've actually had first hand experience of that too it's oh very scary because the children actually believe that they've had these experiences. So on the one hand, you've got all the drama that's associated with that. You have police investigations, you have pot potentially criminal um, charges brought against someone. Yeah. And all because the child genuinely believes that they, these memories are true. Um, so even like a, lo a lie detector wouldn't work because they genuinely believe them but then on top of that you have the psychological abuse of the child who goes through life thinking that they were abused by a parent that's so sad why would like i really don't understand it like i always say this on my videos that i don't um i don't understand how you, how another adult can do this to a child but i guess this is where boundaries isn't it they don't they don't they don't care about whether it's it's to do with the child or what's happening to the child as long as their needs are met mm. and they are they're happy and they're winning because remember it's all about the game and they have to win at regardless what cost and also you find that this is learned behavior within their own families so parental alienation is often historical so it won't just be that one random parent you're your partner won't be the first in their family. Oh my God. It no may way. be that mother prior to that, or father prior to did that, and grandfather or grandmother did that as well. They learn that this works. And so if you meet people and you find out that there's no one, there's there's a lot of relationships where there's only yeah. one parent, there's a yeah. lot of single parents, yeah. that's a warning sign because obviously, well, where are the other parents? Why are they not involved in in these children's lives? So it becomes part of their culture within the family that they just alienate the parent once the relationship is over. They are, Brian. Yeah, they are. And really we can sick. look at the cult. 
But you know what I wanted to ask? Why is it only narcissists that do this? Why, like, why do they do this to their children? Like, even, okay, so say you are with someone and um, you really, you know, your relationship doesn't work out and you just end up, you know, not liking them and, and you know, you, you kind of slag them off behind their back. But you'd never stop your own child seeing the other parent. Why is it that it's only the narcissists that do this? What? I, I, I don't understand There's that. There's lots of different elements. One is that... Um, there's something called pathogenic parenting, which is something that happens. It's an actual, it's like a psychotic break where someone with narcissism will have this psychotic break and genuinely believe that they have to protect their children. That's just one element. Psychotic break. A psychotic oh break. God. When the relationship has, happens under extreme stress, yeah. they can experience a psychotic break, which then means that they believe that they have to protect their child from the okay, ex. Dawn. And so they say all these things. They say that abuse is happening because they believe 100% that it's, that it's at risk. They literally have a psychotic brain mm -hmm. and believe it. So that's just one element. And that's rare, but it is one that I wanted to cover first off. Yeah. The other thing is, like I say, it's that cultural element that actually they're in a narcissistic family. They've grown up around narcissistic mothers or narcissistic fathers who have done this exact same thing. And they've become so enmeshed with one another. Yeah, so it's like, kind of like a learnt behaviour. It's, like, it's, it's a become a conditioning, yeah. isn't it? It's it a is conditioning that, in what's going on. It is that conditioning. On. It's also, yeah. like say, the cult status whereby there's the hierarchy within the family. Oh my God. And yeah, someone yeah, 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 says, yeah. this is how we behave. This is what we do. If you are if you disagree with anything within that structure, you are out. Yes. And that's for information, oh, yes. isn't it? You are yeah, out. that's so true. There's no yeah. coming back yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. So there's yeah, lots of different that. reasons that parents use narcissistic injury if you if you hurt if you hurt them if you hurt a narcissist you injure their ego then they don't want to be around you and they want they will punish you till the end of time and what better way to punish you than with the children that they know that you absolutely love and adore they're jealous they don't want you to have a relationship with them so it's yeah so it's about getting you back it's not actually about what's good for the child it's about getting you back isn't it it is it's, it's the game it's it like, is oh. it's that winning of the yeah. fact that yeah i'm going to use the kids to get what i want out of this no matter what the collateral damage is yeah that's that's what they're going yeah. to do so Dawn asked, actually, um, she was asking, how do you go no contact after knowing all of this information? Dawn, please do um, comment back if, if I'm not explaining this correctly, because I can't remember what you'd written. But it was about something to do with um, no contact and um, knowing all of this information. What, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you get in contact now? How do you go no contact when you have children with the narcissist? It's Obviously, when there's children involved, it's virtually impossible to go no contact. So I would always go low contact. There are, yeah. there are I mean, there's lots of apps that you can use. There's something called Our Family Wizard, which you can use if you, um, if they have contact with them. Ultimately, it's about reducing your stress. So don't try and have any contact with them where possible, because they will use every opportunity to pull you back into the drama, to use you as their supply. So using these apps such as Our Family Wizard actually means that you can control the conversation. It's witnessed by other people in the court process as well. So it, it puts a level of safety in yeah, there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it is hard because they will communicate through the children. If, if Yes, 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 they do, yeah. they do. If they, if yes. you stop the contact with them, they will still get their spine. They'll do it through the kids, and they will pass messages through them. They'll they'll say horrible things. They will carry on the same process as they were. They'll just do it through the children. And this is why part of the research that we're doing around parental alienation is how do you how do you get the diagnosis of the personality disorder? Yeah, this is such a massive thing, and I wish. Do you know what? And I wish there was some way um, that you could, instead of, get, because you do, you get the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder with narcissistic traits, but, but narcissistic personality disorder is not the same as borderline. So where do you draw the line? Where is it that someone, you know, gets diagnosed? Where is the assessment or where is the, yeah, the, the, the criteria for it? And this is part for me, mm. this is why parental alienation should be on the DSM-5 as a narcissistic trait. Okay, Dawn. Because to me, it goes hand in hand. You can't 
all narcissistic parents will use parental alienation. So yeah. it needs to be included in the diagnosis. And once you have a diagnosis, then you can work to protect your children. You can have supervised contacts. You can even remove contact if, if it's deemed that they're unsafe to be around. Can you which do that? I would never advocate. But if it was through the court process and actually this person was abusing them psychologically, then there needs to be safety measures put in place to safeguard the children because they are being psychologically abused. And without going into it, um, there's also parental alienation can lead to physical and sexual abuse as well. So there's a lot of concerns around parental alienation and what can happen. Um, yeah. But yeah, low contact. I think I think you put together a communication yeah. guide, haven't you? Yeah, there is one on the it. other one. Yeah, so how to just do yeah limited contact and boundaries. Like I always talk about boundaries. That's like remember it's about what you are willing to accept and what you're not going to accept and that and that also um applies to um your children as well remember you're the parent and you ultimately decide for the child um what is right and what's not right um dawn was asking um about no contact when someone when the narcissist is controlling you and they have control over like every aspect of your life I think, again, with that one, Dawn, I don't know whether you agree with me, Sarah, but that's all to do with um, boundaries and putting together some kind of framework that you can stick to in terms of communicating with the narcissist. It has to be limited, don't you think? It does. And when you say controlling every aspect, um, obviously, you don't necessarily know exactly what you mean by that. But if it's with regards to the children, go to court. If you can, if you can do that, then put put that framework yeah. in place so that they have to follow that um one of the tools like our family wizard so that again they can't control the communication they can't email you they can't um they can't text you all those kind of things it's all done through this one app um teach your children how to have self-esteem how to believe oh, in God, themselves yeah, yeah, how to yeah, build yeah. boundaries because at the end of the day they're the ones that are going to deal with this for the rest of their lives. And so you need to instill in them all of those things because they will be manipulated. They will be asked to say and do things that they probably don't want to do. So it's teaching them to have the confidence to know what they will and won't accept in the same way. And like Anusha was saying, you need to model yes. that. If you haven't got boundaries in place yourself, how can you expect your children you, Eddie, to yes. have them? So put, you put the boundaries in place, model to your children yeah. how to communicate. If every time the narcissist contacts you, you fly off in a huff or you go off your rocker, which is understandable. We've all been there. <laughs> we've all done that, honestly. But you're modelling that behaviour to your children. So they're going to react in the same way. So it's about trying to think, OK, what's the best way to do this? And show your children how to deal with them because yes they are absolutely that is really good advice like yeah show your children you're the one that's going to have to mm. you know, model that behavior absolutely absolutely i can't read the questions so. that's all right <laughs> <laughs> my eyesight <laughs> <laughs> um yeah do you know one thing that i did i i thought that would be really helpful for um for the channel like and for this video is um actually talking about perhaps how to handle um contact with the narcissist probably like over christmas i know you've done a video on this yeah. on your channel just recently but just i know christmas is like around the corner but like say that that, you, that they um have to have some contact like how can you ensure that there is like no argument when you know like when handing the child over or something you can't in a simple terms you can't because what you'll have found is the narcissist the narcissist is the grinch of christmas they hate it because it's a time for families to have fun to love one another and they're not center yeah. of attention the children are center of attention and they hate that they are jealous yes. and they will, so they will have started probably in about the beginning of december getting really irritating there will have been questions around well when am i having them what time i'm picking them up um, well, I want them at this time. I want them on this day. You had them last year. They will have started really early on yeah, in the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's kicking so off because yeah. they want they want the attention. They're doing the look at me, look at me, but they're doing it in a in a bad way. And so, it, you'll have noticed that that has been happening. That that behaviour has been ramping up. And 
the more no contact you can do, probably the worse their behaviour is getting because you're not giving them the attention you it want. It is all about that mm. blasted attention. I mean, like, they really? Mm. Absolutely. They are like children. They need, and if they're not, then they will just, they will pee on the floor just to get your attention. That is what they do. And so, <laughs> maybe not literally, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but... They are yeah. so desperate for your attention. And so Christmas is the time where you're, they are not center of attention. So they will be doing everything they can to make sure that you're looking at them. So every time they text you and it annoys you, all that energy that you're expending on yeah, them. narcissistic supply. They're yeah, getting it. They they're getting feeding. it. All. Yeah, they love it. They love yeah. making you annoyed. Christmas is their <laughs> supply time. And they get all of it. They, they, they absolutely. Right, they so when... So the hardest thing about Christmas is obviously you don't want to deprive your kids of time with their other parents. Yeah. But you also don't want the drama that goes with it. So again, if possible, if you haven't already been through court or if you haven't had a conversation with them, have these plans in place. I know this is kind of back, but remember for next year, have it agreed, have it in writing what you are going to do, who's going to have them, what time they're being picked up, all those kind of things. Make sure it's very crystal clear down to the minute, what year, all of those things, because they will try and twist it. Um, and just stick to it. Don't bend at all. If Boundaries. You, yeah. If you Boundaries. think, I'll give you, I'll give them an extra hour or I'll give them an extra night because that's nice. They'll, well, you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. They will not recognise it as being a nice act that you've done. They will see it as, oh, I've got one over on them, so I'll push it a little bit more. Yeah. So stick to your boundaries. Also, explain to your children what the plans are. You see, yeah, Bob, yeah, that's right. Because what, what will happen is the narcissist will say to the children, oh, well, your mum or your dad is stopping me from having you on this day. When actually, if you've sat down with them and said, right, this is the plan... You're seeing dad here or mum here, you're here on these days. Then when the narcissist says that to them, they can go, well, no, actually, I've seen the plan and that's yeah. not what's happening. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. bypass those kind of things. And for me, one of the biggest things is don't let it ruin your Christmas because that yes, is what they, they want. Yeah. They want you to be angry. They want you to row with your new partner. They want you to be angry at the kids. You want it. They want to ruin it. So deliberately don't let it. Make sure that you have the best time. Even if it's you're faking it, just do it. Because don't let them ruin it. Because then you've let them win, essentially. And you can't let them win. No. That's right. I've just had a question. Um, here, and I've forgotten the name. I'm sorry. It's about um, that you're, 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 um, you've just gone no contact and struggling with the codependency and, and what have you. So you're, are you being love bombed at the moment? Is that, what's, that, is that what's really difficult? Or is it about the fact of trying to get your head around the fact that you were with a narcissist, someone who has a personality disorder and um, they are making you kind of question your own sanity is it or is it not? And we were just talking about that earlier, actually, um, before we went live, that we were saying about, you know, you get to a point when you're, when you've gone no contact and you kind of then think, um, you kind of, hi, Kevin. Yes, good. I'm glad you found it. Hello. <laughs> um, you kind of go no contact and then you think, um, were they actually um, unwell? Are, were they actually a narcissist or am I just, am I just imagining it? And that's, I think that's, I mean, I know that I've gone through those thoughts and I've thought to myself, you know, maybe they weren't that bad. Maybe he wasn't, you know, one. But the thing is, like I said, it's not just, and I think I mentioned this in a video before, like in um, Nasty or Narcissist. It's about, it's not just one particular behavior. It's like a whole cycle. It's like a whole, um, what's the word? There's a whole kind of, um, what's the word, Sarah? You're like... There's a whole thing to it. There's like a whole... Um... Yeah, it's not one behaviour in isolation. Yeah. Yes, that's There's the a whole that's package of behaviour that, that goes with it. And I, th I think what we talked about as well was that we all feel insecure. All of us have felt insecure. All of us have had those little crazy thoughts yes. where we thought... Yes, it is. Everything. It is a spectrum. I just want to just want to check if they're in. We've had those thoughts. And I, I, I say anyone who hasn't thought about giving someone a quick stalk is a liar we've had those thoughts 
but we all know there's a line and we don't cross it and that's the difference a narcissist will see the line and jump right over it and go for it and not even and the thing is they won't feel guilty so they won't even recognize that, that they've yeah. done anything wrong they will blame you for making them do yes. these behaviors and they'll say that you've got bipolar yeah get you diagnosed with narcissism <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they say you're a psycho. <laughs> I've all been called a psycho. Okay, Susanna just actually um, uh, put a really good question up. Um, actually, what do you, so what do you do when you bump into the ex narcissist and their new girlfriend? Do you know what you do? You have the biggest smile and you just carry on walking past because you've got to show them that you are happy, like that 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 this does not affect you. Because the narcissist would be thinking. Oh my God, this is amazing. Like I've got my ex here, my new girlfriend, mm -hmm. and they'll and he will be making the new girlfriend um, jealous and saying lies about you um, and, and your relationship. So this is like a perfect, this would have been like a perfect moment. You've just walked past, smile and keep walking. Do not even look back. I think remember, this is the thing that always gets me is they've been told, like we've all had this where Everyone, for all the flying monkeys have been told, oh, you're this, she's that, she's mental, she's off her head, she's an alcoholic, she's this, that and the other. So when you do bump into them, make sure you're the exact opposite of everything that they've Yes, that's been a told. good point. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Because if you go and you're, if you, because some, there'll be some part of you that feels like you're you want to protect them. That you want to say to this person, look, don't go with them. They're nutty. They'll ruin your life. But actually, what that will do is they, that will prove what the narcissist has been saying. So you'll end up looking a little bit crazy because this stranger who thinks this guy is God or woman is God. Yes, is gonna they think, do. Yeah. Well, you crazy nut. You've just told me that, that, that this, that and the other. They'll find out in their own time and you can't, you can't be responsible for them. So, yeah, just be as cool calm and collected as you possibly can i would ignore i would i would try and avoid eye contact and everything just pretend i haven't even seen them yes because you're not feeding into that narcissistic mm. supply Don't give them that. yeah mm. exactly um i just read a comment now which was actually really good and it's something we've been talking about so um one of one of the viewers is involved in a relationship with a narcissist but also their mum <laughs> Be careful what I say now. <laughs> Don't mention any names, I'm sorry. We're laughing because... We've just had this exact conversation. Because that was my situation, mm. that's why. I'm sorry, I shouldn't it is, and this is part much. of it. It's historical, this is what we're saying. This yeah. is part of what this is. It, the behaviour is historical and you will spot it in other family members. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you will, you will do. And... Um, Yes, and it's very much, so again, like what you were saying, it's about hierarchy and there'll be that one person that will be calling the shots and and they will be like directing the whole family and so the rest of the little minions, so to speak, will or the flying monkeys, whatever, um, they will, they'll be like um, controlled by this, by, by the main narcissist. Think of it as the film films of like when you've got vampires. So you've always got the head vampire and then you've got the, it trickles down like in a hierarchical mm. triangle. And it's kind of, it's like that. Um, but in terms of handling it, you can't. <laughs> you, you can't because it makes you go insane in the head. Mm. Like, I mean, you've, you're gonna, you, you've got it double barrel here. Um, you've got the mother and then, and then your partner as well. I guess... I always say this, but I guess it's it is about boundaries and it's about knowing what you accept and what you don't. And I think eventually um, you'll see that that you're not going to be able to win against them because they they just play a, a stupid game. That you know why would you want to win against certain things? It just it just doesn't work. And I and I hope that you do find I hope that you do find peace and I and I hope that you do find a way forward, whatever it is whether you stay or you decide that enough is enough? I think for me, a big thing was it's recognising that. It's recognising as well that Hi, there's tracker. more players. There are other people involved in this um, because that tells you that this isn't going to change. This, this person that you've fallen in love with and you've recognised as a narcissist, we all have that hope. We all have that hope that one day they'll wake up and it'll all be yeah. gone and they'll be the person that they were at the start when they were wonderful. But actually, if you see that it's their, it's their mum or their dad as well, 
This is all they've ever known. Yes. This is, they do not know how else to behave. So they're not going to change. So it means that you can change. It means that you can make a decision then. You can make an informed decision. Is this part? Is this a family that I want to be part of? Leopard King, I'll answer that in a moment. So it, for me, it is, once you know and you know that it's historical within the family, they all behave in the same way. They are then you can absolutely make that decision of, do I want to continue this life? Because if you have kids, your kids are going to learn this exact same behaviours. So you're yeah. going to be passing this on to the next generation. So consciously make those decisions. Consciously think, is this what I want? If it is, that's absolutely fine. No judgments. But just make sure that you're, you're, yes. you're taking on board all the facts. And so, yeah, recognising that it is historical but can play a big part in... The decisions that you make about moving forward with relationships yeah because exactly they're not going to know any different and actually leopard king um he's just um asked a question is is um in narcissistic families can can the children then become narcissists themselves absolutely right. um sure. if you think about a way and not if you think about a way a narcissist parent if you have children now with a narcissist you can see the way that they're parenting you yeah. can see that it's very push pull you may have one child that's the golden child one that's the scapegoat however regardless of whether you're pedestal or pit then you they're still going to be treated in a very confusing way they will create an ambivalent attachment because yes. they won't know what mood the narcissist is going to be in are they ever they're never going to please the narcissist nothing they ever do is going to be good enough even the golden child will be pushed those They'll reach a point and then they'll be pushed a bit more and pushed yeah. a bit more and pushed a bit more. Scapegoat, it will be, doesn't matter if they get an A, it won't be good enough. Yeah. So that is how a child will feel. So you can see how that will develop into a narcissist adult because an ambivalent re attachment can result in ambivalent relationships which are push pull not really interested and that's exactly what an adult narcissist looks like it's so not all children of narcissists will grow up to be narcissists but you can see how yes. that can happen parental alienation adds a whole new uh, um dimension to that because you've got the added trauma you've got the trauma that's involved in the separation you've got the false memories which means that they believe they've been abused and we know that abuse can play a part in narcissist nar the development of narcissistic personality disorder so the parental alienation yeah incest obviously definitely can occur of course yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the boundaries are across and physical and sexual abuse does take place in narcissistic families certainly. not all but a lot yeah and as certainly the child will be abused emotionally mm -hmm. Because they just and and of course they have no stable foundation. They don't they don't have that secure base. You know, like what John Bowlby talks about that secure base. And so the child never really knows who they are because they're never actually validated as a child. And so and that's why and that's why some children then go on to and this is why narcissists actually they go on to look in their environment. Um, you know, to get that validation and in the environment it's other people. So other, they want that, you know, recognition that, hey, I'm still here, I'm still good enough because they have this, they have this storm going on inside their minds all the time. And but I, they wouldn't if yeah. they're scared of it. This exactly, is the thing, because that, they don't know any, no. they don't know any better. And they think if they get it, then they'll lose it. So it's that, I want it so badly, I wanted to be in a relationship with you so badly, I wanted to love you. But I'm terrified that you're going to leave me. Yeah. So I can't give you everything and I'm going to treat you horribly. So it is that constant in, out, in, out. And that's how, that's how narcissists parent and how, and how they are in relationships. It's just a narcissist in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah. And remember, the narcissist always has a choice um, to go the, the positive way or the negative route. Okay. And so they are aware of what they're doing. Like Absolutely. you just said, they know what they're doing. So... Then it just, because I've always thought about this, why is it that a narcissist will then become, a narcissist child then becomes a narcissist or whatever, like how, do, how does that happen? But sometimes children who are brought up in narcissistic families, they're not actually, they don't become narcissists because they've chosen or they've recognized that what has happened to them is so wrong and that they want to seek help for it. So then that boils down to a, to a question of choice, really. Um, 
isn't it? Because not Maybe. like you know, I mean, I I speak to I speak to survivors of um, of abuse, narcissistic abuse, where mother or father were um, abusive towards them, or they were narcissists, and that doesn't mean that then that person is a narcissist. They recognise that these behaviours are wrong. Mm. So then that so then it really just boils down to a question of choice what do you want you know they know what they do what they are doing is wrong but they are so addicted to that attention of, of getting what they want that they can't stop it's that lack of responsibility i think that plays a difference is that any child who's brought up in an emotionally and psychologically physically sexually abusive it environment they are going to have yeah there is genetic there, there are genetic oh, is there because yeah. i always thought that it was conditioned behavior no there are genetic there are genetic implications i've done lots of twin studies that show there is a genetic element but Do you bleach, i'll answer that in a moment but um any child that's brought up in an abusive environment, no matter what it is, is going to have it. There's a long with that. It does not matter who you are. What matters is that resilience that is instilled in the child. So that could be from you as the parent, the non-narcissistic parent. You build that resilience in them. You um, teach them about self-esteem. You boost. They build their internal working model up so they are validated as a child so that they don't need those things. But then as they... As they become older, it's about acknowledging that yeah, we all we all have we're all scared we're all scared of being rejected. We all have those same fears, yeah. but actually, yeah. when would you behave in a certain way? And if you do behave in a certain way, do you apologise? And that's the key. Narcissists will never apologise. A narcissist will never say yes. I hurt yeah. you, and I'm sorry. They'll say you made me do it. And that's the difference. So a psychologically abused child, yes, probably will lash out in later life and make mistakes, but we all do. We've all hurt people. Every single one of us, regardless of our background, has hurt someone in our lives. But we apologise and we acknowledge that we did that and we decide, I'm not going to yeah. make that same mistake again. I'm never going to do it. Narcissists won't acknowledge that. They'll just leave a trail of destruction behind them time and time again making the same mistakes over and over because again. they don't learn they yeah. don't actually have any self-actualization yeah they don't even get it they don't no. understand that what I they've done is wrong. wrong yeah i've done nothing wrong so they can never progress i guess we're lucky in that way mm. i guess it's not lucky that we've been a abused but we're able to make those connections and move forward Absolutely. i had another really actually interesting question um about and maybe you're better at this better like answering this about why do narcissists hate hate their mothers male they don't narcissists all. they don't all um there can be why would a narcissist hate anyone really yeah because that's so true they were unable to meet their needs they maybe saw them as weak normally what happens is a narcissist hates the things that they hate about themselves. Yeah. So what? Whether it, I mean, parental alienation plays a big part in this because nos, uh, children could end up hating their parent because they're told that they should, that they're awful, that they've done this, they've done that, and actually they don't hate them. They just think that they should hate them because that's the conditioned behaviour that their narcissistic parent has put in them. But the narcissist also, like I say, they hate them. They hate themselves, and so we they hate whatever is reflected in someone else. So the the mother that, that they hate could be because there's some part of them. Yes. So it's it's that reflection. But is it also? I remember when I done that video, narcissist and sex. Do you remember? Um, it was we were talking about um, the saints and sinners complex. So if they put the mother into the saint complex, into that complex, into that concept, um, they they will worship their mother and it will be seen as these are, I'm talking about from a male um, perspective and then they've got, you know, a mother or sister or daughter, so they will put them up on pedestal, so they'll value them. Whereas um, for sinners, the sex then is um, is kind of reserved for women who are degraded. But... I think on top of that as well, it's something that I'm I'm right in the middle of writing a blog post about this actually, is that if you've ever studied stage development theory, we know that the Oedipus complex exists. We know mm. that children are attracted to their opposite sex uh, parent. And yeah, yeah. what if a narcissist is stuck 
What if your narcissist is stuck at that age? What if trauma happens at two, three years old and they are they are absolutely stuck psychologically, their brain doesn't develop past the point of a two year old child. They throw temper tantrums, okay, they are I'll unable to develop. And so that would explain why there's the incest element is because actually they're stuck at the Oedipus stage. They're stuck. They don't move past that. Yeah. They, they're stuck with Freud's theory. The around, psychosexual yeah, development. They are yeah. stuck in those stages because actually a traumatic incident happened that's meant that they haven't been able to progress past that age. That, you know, in trauma, everyone become, you become frozen. You know, mm. like think about it when you went through your traumatic experience, you're, you're kind of frozen in that moment and you can't, you can't move forward. And when you're a child, that impact, there's biological evidence that trauma stops development. It, yes. It's on a yes. cellular level. Yes. So your brain, their brains won't develop in the same way, which means their emotions, their behaviors, everything will be impacted. So it's an, it's an interesting area that I'm looking at at the moment that what if that's what's happened? That a traumatic experience has meant that they've got stuck. And so that's what happened. I'll link all of that below in the, in, the comments, in the comments section so you can then read Sarah's research, which is like amazingly um, interesting. Like, wow. Um, mm. I had another question on how do you have a successful relationship with a narcissist? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, let's, Sorry. let's gauge what success means. And this is the thing. Success is personal. Yeah. So somebody might say that a successful relationship is getting married. Some people might say a successful relationship is having children together. Yeah. Success they is might not, yeah. Yes. They personal, might not care whether they're happy. Yeah. But they might see that as successful. So... We can't answer what makes a successful relationship because I'm not you. I don't know what your version of success is. To me, it's not possible to have. I don't think it's possible. A successful you, you relationship. cannot. You can't. If you want to be loved, which I'm guessing most people do, you cannot be in a relationship with a narcissist and be loved because they can't do that. No. You could be with one who doesn't cheat. Not all narcissists cheat. You could be with one who doesn't hit you. You could be with one who um, brings in lots of money. But you'll never be with one who can meet your emotional needs. Yeah. But if you think that, that if you don't need those things, then that might be successful to you. That's a really good answer, actually. That's a really good answer. I don't know if I would have answered that, success but that's really good. Success is personal. Good. Yes, success is personal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It does come down to it because we've all had our own experiences and we'll have all had our own tipping point. You're welcome. Some people accept a lot more. Some people stay in relationships with narcissists for 20, 30, 40 years even. Some people die and stay with these people. For, I'm guessing for anyone who's on this call, and certainly from our experience, we reached our tipping point fairly early on. Yeah. Because we weren't, we weren't happy. We weren't feeling like it was a successful relationship. But some people do. Brian's asking, any tips for self-parenting? Take care of yourself, boost your self-esteem. Yeah. Um, think about all the things that are important to children, nurture, nurturing them, um, teaching them how to read, just, you know, yeah. self-development, all those things. Go out and have fun, play. Play is so good for trauma as well. If any of you um, are struggling with how to deal with it, go out and play. It's one of the best ways to, to release the stress. Play therapy is great for adults as just as, as, as it is Thank for you, kids. Edward but yeah, just true. think about all the things that you would do for a child. And do to yourself. Go out and buy yourself a new toy or whatever that might be. It yeah, might a new be, iPhone yeah, 7. So I mean, X now, yeah, it's 10, not 7. <laughs> um, or a new iPad or yeah. a new laptop. Just look after yourself. Treat yourself kindly. Nurture yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's really important because at the end of the day, those children are going to need you um, to be their stable rock. And if you are feeling under the weather or you're feeling emotionally um, vulnerable, then your child is going to pick up on that. And it's just going to make parenting really, really difficult. You're absolutely. important too. You can't be a good parent if you're not a good person. Yeah. And so work on being the best version of you and you'll be a, a much better parent for doing that. And we all know parenting is the hardest job in the world. 
and you have to you have to be on the ball because I mean there's evidence that even even in the womb kids are picking up yeah. on your mood so if you're yeah. you suffer with depression in your pregnancy that's affecting your baby's development so imagine once they're here and they are absorbing it all from their environment so, and you're the biggest part of that you're the biggest part of their environment yeah. So you have to be giving out the best possible vibes to them. So, yeah, lots of self-care. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then if you think about it, how narcissistic parents um, really... That's the same for reparenting. Brian's asking, is that the same for reparenting yourself? I was going to say, sorry, I'm just stroking Sarah's dog. <laughs> so cute. Um, we'll, um, we'll include him at the end. Um, but yeah, like, you know how you get narcissistic um, families and the child never feels that they are emotionally um, validated. And if you don't do that with your children, if they, you know, you've got to validate them as well. Because that's what they need is ultimately... Um, like I think one of you, I think Eddie said that it was unconditional love. That you know, that's it. That can conquer everything. It is, and some of the main. I mean, if you've ever looked at child development, then there's main categories that you can work on with your children. Um, so providing them with emotional warmth. So being there when they, well, being intuitive, and I think that's one of the biggest things yes. with your kids. Good parents know by looking at their child what mood they're in. They don't need them to lash out. They don't need them to swear. They don't need them to cry. They know just by looking at them because yes, you're that yes, in yes. tune. And try and get to that point with your kids so that you 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 are that in sync with them that you, you can provide them with what they need. The same way when you, with a baby. When it cries, is it hungry? Is it tired? Does it need a snappy changing? You learn that. You learn that as a mum, you learn to recognise what each cry means. And that just, that you just get better at that as they get older. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And do you know another thing that I, I was going to ask you about? What, you know when, for example, you're in the court system with the children and you've got all of this stack of evidence against you? How do you, how, and the narcissist is lying, mm. all right? How then do you prove or what do you do when they are doing their crazy lies against you? What the hell do you do? I think one of the hardest things that people find with this is that you've got to remember that a narcissist started their smear campaign a long time before your relationship ended. Whilst you were together, they were going around telling everyone that you're this, you're that, you're the other. So, you've got a drink problem, you've got mental health problems, you are aggressive. They've already laid that foundation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that when the relationship breaks up, you, when you're treated terribly, when they're telling you you can't see the kids, you can't do this, and they're making all these false allegations, your natural instinct is to defend yourself. But because you're defending yourself, everyone else looks at it and goes, see, they are crazy. Yeah. So they're proving the hypothesis that the narcissist has already put out there. And everything you do proves their point. So they're gaining credibility. Everyone's believing them more and more. Your, your credibility is going rock bottom because you're, you're being natural. But it's proving what they've already laid the foundations for. And so it doesn't matter what you do everything's adding weight to their yeah, argument it's a game. so it becomes bigger this is why when we say gray rock no contact we mean with everyone yeah because everyone is feeding in they've triangulated every single person involved in this they've tri triangulated domestic abuse services rape crisis police social workers schools they're all involved in this they're all their little flying monkeys and so they they are um, using them to prove their points against you. The direction you have with these people, because, because you're angry, yes. they're going, oh, they were right about them. They really are. They're very aggressive. They're very controlling. But actually, you're not being aggressive and controlling. You're frustrated and you're angry because someone is spreading lies about you. Yeah. So going no contact in Grey Rock is even more important because actually every time you say something, you're feeding... So just cut down and 
I'm a strong believer in the truth will always come out. So it does, though. It does, it does come out. It does because even when they, even when the narcissists are, 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 you know, doing their smear campaign, at the end of the day, you know, how many times can you hear the, you know, the narcissist posting something about you? Mm. You know, how many times? It, it's just it gets boring actually, and people then start to realise well. They are a bit of a weirdo. Or why are you? Why do they keep posting it all the time? And you know, and and there will be other incidences that happen naturally. Um, you know, and you they'll just they'll just click and think, well, that's not right. I mean, well, what happens is, is the positive reinforcement is what's going on because you behave in a way that's exactly as the narcissist predicted you were going to behave. So everyone then jumps to the defence of the narcissist saying, you are right, they're terrible. So they're getting all this positive reinforcement of, oh my God, this is brilliant, I'm going to do more of this, I'm going to do even more. So they, their behaviour becomes so outrageous because they are literally like, I can do anything, I am so omnipotent that no one is questioning me, I, everyone believes me, I'm amazing, that they become stupid. And they, they do something crazy and then all of a sudden everyone goes, oh, Oh my God, we were wrong. They, they're the crazy one. So the truth does come out. Give them enough rope and they will... I'm sorry, I'm using loads of, <laughs> loads of phrases now. Give them enough rope and they will hang themselves because they will, they, it's reinforcing all the time that they're doing the right thing. And when it's like someone's... If they climb two steps up and they jump off and they do, they, they're fine, they'll then go three steps up, four steps up, five steps up. And that's what a narcissist does. Eventually, they're going to fall and break their leg. And that's what a narcissist will do. They'll keep going, step up, step up, step up, until they fall, and that's when the wheels will come off the bus, and they everyone will realise what they're doing. <laughs> the wheels come off the bus. I, know, I keep doing them, can't I? I should, I should have a counter. <laughs> How many I'm using? <laughs> Bing. But, no, but you're right. <laughs> you will. I mean, eventually, then you know, people will will click. What the hell is just going on? Because I mean, at the end of the day, you managed to click. You realised that what what they were doing. Um, and so, and so, um, so will everybody else, you know, um, cause their behavior is really odd mm. and it does become apparent because of the more things that they do, they, they try to get more people to kind of believe them. And so their, 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 um, efforts become more and more outrageous. What you find as well is that a lot of these flying monkeys, they're being treated in the exact same way as you are. So they're being threatened. They're being threatened yeah. with being pushed out. So they're doing everything they can not to be pushed out. They will, they will jump through all the hoops because they don't want to be outside of this cult. They want to stay within the inner circle. And so the flying monkeys probably know That's it. that it's you're not. It's a cult. Yeah. Because it's, it's, the cult is the inner circle is because it's power and it's control. And they feed off that. Remember, with them, it's all about attention and validation. Remember, they didn't get this as a child. So they're like, I want it. I want it more and more and more. Yeah, exactly. And so they stay, the flying monkeys stay in that yeah. inner circle because they, they're scared and they don't, want to, they don't want to be pushed out. So they believe and they treat you like crap so that they get to stay. So it's not that people, are, it's not that everyone buys into it. It's not that everyone doesn't see what they're doing. It's that they are, the narcissist is that powerful and that manipulative that they've got the control over everyone. But it does, it will break down. It will. It's not sustainable. Yeah, it's no. not sustainable. It, you know, you, you can't because remember, they've got to remember what lies they have mm. been saying to someone else. They've got to sustain this. And remember, they are always looking for cues in the environment. And this gets really tiring. Remember we talked about um also when they when they kind of um go back into themselves they become quiet there's no social activity they've no social contact with anybody else they just sit there quietly in a darkened room drinking whiskey you know um so they 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 can't sustain it so this is when it all breaks down and when it does hell breaks loose for them not you but in their mind yes absolutely they've always uh, all they're bothered about is protecting that fragile Crazy. sense of self yeah so they built all these layers up around it and when those layers start to disappear then that's when they're at the most dangerous to be honest is because they'll it's do anything epidemic. to protect yes they will do anything to protect yes so 
be aware. At all costs. Yeah. At all costs. Remember, they will sacrifice their own children to protect their fa uh, uh, facade, their false self. Absolutely. And this is, again, going back to parental alienation, this is when parents kill because oh God, they yeah. know that actually they've lost control. Rather than lose control and everyone see what the truth is, They'll exit the world, but they won't leave their children, so they'll take the children knowing that that's Thank it, you, it's yeah. done. It's yeah. that the game is over. And they think that essentially because they've taken it away from you. Kim West, that's a really, really good uh, question. Why do they, why does the narcissist smear the whole relationship? Why do they do because it? Because they have got to play either the hero or the victim. So if they, normal people, you break up with someone, there's good and there's bad. You break anyone, any normal relationship, that's what happens. You have a period of mourning where you slag them off and all your friends are going, oh, they're this, they're that, the other. But actually, over time and reflection, you realise, well, actually, yes. I made a mistake as well. I should have done this. But a narcissist can't do that because they can't ever admit that they have made a mistake, ever. And so they have to discredit you at every opportunity. Because otherwise people are going to say, well, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. What about you? So they have to make you out to be awful throughout the entire relationship. And everyone will go, well, oh, my God, how did you put up with that? Yeah. Oh, you poor thing. All the attention. Munchausen's or fabricated illness, big part of it because all yeah. the attention that they get. So this is part of the relationship is like the sickness so they they say that you've abused them, you've done this, you're a psycho, you stalk them, you've done all these things because they play the victim. They are ill and they get all that attention associated with those behaviours. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, that's why they smear everything is because they're all the attention that they get for being that. Yeah, they play the victim so well as well. Oh, yes, yes, oh my God, you must then. Yeah, and they love the, playing the victim because, again, that's attention. And remember, also, it's about hierarchy. If they put you down, if they smear you, that means they're on top. So mm. they're winning the whole time. Whether they are on top or whether they are playing the victim, they're winning because yep. they're getting that attention. And remember, it, attention is means everything to them. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, we have got eight minutes left, um, and if you have any questions that you want to ask, please do type them up and send them over so we can answer your questions. I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my eyes. Why so much hate when you leave them? By Duke Leach. Why so much Narcissistic hate? Narcissistic injury plays a massive part in that. You, that, again, they've got their most fragile sense of self oh, going. Yes. It's like an egg. A very very precious egg and when you leave them you damage that egg so they have to make you pay for that on top yes. of that they have to they have to destroy your credibility because again they need to come out on top they need to look like they did nothing wrong this relationship didn't end because of any of their faults no it's no. all your faults so remember you're crazy yeah you're, you're the crazy you're one. crazy and you're <laughs> you're terrible you're a monster and so the bigger they are with that then the more sympathy they're going to get out of it so again it's just that cycle of don't want anyone to see the truth which is yeah. that actually they're a bit <coughs> faulty so they hide that with this lavish play of it is a play, isn't yeah. it? It is a lavish play. And you know what? That's so frustrating as well because you can see through it. Nobody else can. It's like you are stuck mm. in like this jar and, you, <laughs> and everyone's watching. You're like, oh my God, it's not true. But they do. They are brilliant. They have PhDs in this. There's a guide. I'm sure there's a handbook <laughs> going around that they all read because they all behave in the exact same way they do it's scary very, yeah the characteristics are yeah, it is because of emotional abuse th through childhood and that's how the human psyche then kind of manages it by becoming that well yeah if you think about it if you yes it is if, if from being a child you've never been given any love you've 
you've never well, you, no one came to you when you were crying as a baby so no one I'll came to next. you so there's no security in your life no security whatsoever you take you would know that sooner or later everyone's going to leave you and every, you're going to be alone because that's what you were as a child you were on your own as a child and so you have to put on this grand performance to make people come in and watch you have to get people in so it has to be bigger and grander than anything else but you can't maintain that no, no. one can maintain that level of performance and so when it does all fall apart there has to be other people to blame for this it can't be that it's their fault. It has to be everyone else's fault. Your children's fault. Your fault. Your parents' fault. Society's fault. Anyone they can pin the blame on, they will do. Um, and that is why false allegations are made. That is why all the smear campaigns happen. Is it just they just can't they can't accept any responsibility for any of their own shortcomings. No, that's right. That's that's yeah, mm. absolutely. They're never gonna accept the blame for them. No. Absolutely not. That would be dangerous to them because that would that would show a level of vulnerability and they're not prepared to admit any level of vulnerability because it's like a thread. If you give away one little bit of vulnerability, you could start unpicking that thread and all of a sudden that whole world comes crashing down around them and they've they've not been able to protect that lift leg inside. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I was supposed to answer a question, but I've actually forgotten what it is. And oh, can you can you resend it, please? I'm so sorry. I just I've literally it's just gone out of my head. I'm so sorry. We just have literally just under four minutes left. So if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer, please do um, send send it in. Sorry, the comments come in really yeah. fast, so we're really struggling to read them in time. And I can't see them very well. So, <laughs> so I'm yeah, struggling at all. I'm so sorry. Mm. I completely forgot what it was, and it was a really good oh, it was a really good question. I forgot. I'm really sorry. I believe advertisement is the soil funnel. Mm -hmm. Leopard King, I don't know what you mean by that. Sorry. Oh, yes, Sophia, sorry, yes. Why do they come back? Why do narcissists come back? In my experience, it's because you are basically the top of the food chain as far as they can get. Um, you know, at really? school, you used to yeah. have like, oh, you're, you're an A, you're a B, you're a C. Thank you, everyone Brian. Graded, everyone was graded. <laughs> so you, to them, so say, that, say they're a C, you might be a B or an A, yeah. So they want you because they can then fly by your coattails and yes, that's to go right to your status. Yeah, they want to be yeah. you. They, they would want status. you. Yeah, they want you. But they then hate they you. that you've got it, so they then use it against you and try and take it away from you. But so if 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 you split up, they might go around thinking, oh, I need to find another A or a B. They probably can't because we know that they're probably it's not what, that yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So then they go, oh, I need to go back to that. So they're desperately trying to seek someone with an, a status higher than them to give them that self-validation. Yes. And if they can't find it, then they'll come back to you. Or the other thing is as well, they know that you're an empathetic person and you'll forgive a hell of a lot more than they the do majority so, yeah, of people. They do build you up to put you down. Sorry, sorry. They, they do build you up. So they they'll do. come back because they'll think that you forgive them. They think they, they've won you over before with all the love bombing. So they think if they just do that again, remind you Elaine, of who they were, Elaine. then you'll come back to them. Elaine Milligan was asking, why do, why do services not see this? <laughs> this is the crux of our work. This is why I'm doing training. Yes. <laughs> this is why we are doing what we're doing because uh, specifically Sarah wants to train um, other social workers, other people uh, like police. Uh, who else? Who else is there? Doing CAFCAS, police. Um, counsellors, mental yeah. health workers, People judges, don't know about solicitors. It. They don't. People they don't think they know about it. And if you're in the UK, you would have seen front page of The Guardian the other week where there's a big article about how Kafkas are introducing their new high conflict pathway. I've done a video about my interpretation of it. We'll link it Not again. quite as good as we think. But they don't. They don't understand the complexities that are involved with parental right. alienation. Okay, 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 and okay, so... Okay. Um, that's the work that I'm doing at the moment and the work that Anushka and I are putting together with our training is to do that, is to get that word out. We've actually got a big conference coming up 
in, yeah, in, um, in March mm. on the South Coast, where we're going to be training people, training professionals from a wide variety of different professions on what is narcissistic abuse and parental alienation, what the signs are, why it's going wrong, because that's ultimately, it's going wrong. There's a lot, I mean, yeah. we haven't got time to talk about it now, but so many biases take place within these things. We've oh, touched on yes. some of them, but actually, if, if actually, if all clinicians and professionals did due diligence, it wouldn't happen. But it's not happening, and so we need to highlight that fact, and we need to we need to basically just retrain them to we do a better job. We need to bring it to the light, all of this. We yeah. need to expose this so this doesn't happen in future generations. This is already such an epidemic and has ruined so many lives, uh, lives that, you know, it's just, I don't, I, you know, we don't want it for our children. We don't want them to, to go through all of this. This is heartbreaking. You know, to, to be alienated from your children, to be treated like this, something has to be done and this is our mission to mm. to change that to do something about that okay so i'm really sorry we're out of time so it has we're up to an hour now um i just want to say thank you so much um for joining us um to watch our um youtube live on um parental alienation in narcissistic families Thank you so much for joining us again. And Sarah, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having she me. She is like a pillar of amazing. knowledge. Um, I hope we've helped. I hope that yeah. there's a lot of information and I haven't even touched on so much. It's it's a big issue, but I hope that what we've been through has given you some kind of comfort or some way of moving forward. Thank you, Dawn. Obviously, reach thank out to you. us if you need thank any more help please you. do thank you and also just to let you know that i will be on next tuesday at 8 p.m i know that in the uk that is boxing day but because i'm so committed to this and sarah as well we i mean i'm i'm i don't know i'm not going to be joining you you're not going to be joining me next week no you're she's no, with family, family, family commitment but i will right. be doing we have our group so but but yes on doing. facebook um sarah does um friday night live um on her facebook i will link we'll all the details below i will be Day. live yeah oh you're, you're doing christmas, doing christmas day. day okay sarah's on christmas day i'm on boxing day on youtube so i will join you guys next week have a good week and i will be releasing another video at some point um this week maybe you would have I'm really sorry it went too fast yeah i know and merry christmas to yeah, you merry all christmas, merry christmas thank care. you bye boxing bye. day yes boxing day we're on bye, bye. sarah come more times